Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and this is the first video in a series where I'm gonna share information that I think every therapy client should know. The first three videos in this series I call my TED Talk. Every single one of my clients will hear this little speech from me eventually. It helps to frame my philosophy about therapy, emotions, and the nervous system, and gives us a common vocabulary for our work together. So we talk a lot about emotions in therapy, and we tend to think of emotions as entirely thought-driven. I'm sad, or I'm anxious, or I'm angry. But we now know that emotions are actually full-body physiological responses. And more and more, I'm starting to view emotions specifically and mental health in general as simply byproducts of our extremely active nervous systems, or said differently, a core part of our neurobiology. So let's talk about our nervous system for a bit. Our nervous system is made up of our brains, our spinal cord, and the trillions of nerves that transmit signals back from all over your body. And one of the main jobs of our nervous system is to constantly ask the question, am I safe? Am I okay right now? And if it senses a threat, like sees a coiled up snake, it calls up the sympathetic part of the system which activates fight or flight. Our muscles tense, our hearts beat faster, our lungs take in more air, and blood plumps out to our extremities to get ready to run or to hack that snake into pieces. So after we see that actually that was a garden hose and not a snake, the parasympathetic part of the system takes over and that reverses everything. It relaxes our muscles, it slows down our heart rate and our breathing, and it returns our blood to our central organs so that we can rest and digest. Sometimes all of this can happen without the thought even registering in our brain. Wow, there's a snake. I'm scared of snakes. That quick response or emotion is the byproduct of our finely tuned nervous system. So now let's take a moment to talk about the decision-making organ, the brain. So I could show you a diagram of the brain, but it turns out that we have a pretty good brain model attached to us, our fist. So if you make your hand into a fist, tucking in your thumb, it's a pretty good approximation of, of our brains. This is courtesy of Dan Siegel. So your arm is the spinal cord, the knuckles are the front of the head, this is the back of the head. So our brains developed from the inside out. So all of the most primitive, oldest functions are on the inside, and the most sophisticated, shiny new functions are on the outside. And you can think of the brain as divided into three parts. The palm represents the reptile brain, or the brain stem. It's the part of the brain that would keep you alive if you were in a coma. It regulates your breathing, heart rate, temperature, digestion, and sleeping. The thumb represents the mammal brain. It takes care of our alarm system, emotions, and most memory. And the fingers are the human brain. So this part takes care of cognitions, rational thought, social behavior, language, the things that make us human. And the very front of the brain, your front knuckles, is the prefrontal cortex, which deals with planning, decision-making, thinking about cause and effect, organizing all of our executive functions. So what happens when we experience something frightening? Our mammal brain, or thumb, sounds the alarm, and our human brain, or fingers, go offline, and we rely almost entirely on our reptile brains and mammal brains to make sure that we can survive and get to safety. So what does this mean in practice? It means that during peak times of fear or anger, we don't have much access to the human brain that helps us to think, plan, and consider cause and effect. Those functions are largely unavailable and we go into full survival mode until we are safe again. So as a simplification, we can demonstrate this by flipping our lid. And now we can see that the human brain doesn't have a lot of contact with the rest of the brain when we're in crisis mode. Those parts of the brain only reconnect once we feel safe again. So now join me in the second video in this series where I talk about how we are programmed to respond to threats. And let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.